Hi, this is Dr. Don. I want to take a few minutes and work through a problem out of my stat lab where we're required to create some histograms. We're given raw data, a data table, and then we're asked to create three histograms with five, 10, and 20 classes. Now, I want to walk you through step by step, showing you both StatCrunch and also Excel. Well, let me show you this just so you'll see where I get this to save a little bit of time. Here are the right answers for the five class histogram. You can see it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to grab a screenshot of these and I'll compare these to what we do with Excel and StatCrunch in a minute. Down here, when we're looking for the 10 classes, it's this one. Pop that out. And we've got some ups and downs there on that one. And then on 20, I'll pop this one up. And it looks even more funky. we got a lot of bins there, but some white space. So I'm going to grab screenshots of those so we can compare them as we go through Stat, Crunch, and Excel. Now remember when you're in my Stat Lab, you've got this little blue rectangle there. You can click on it and you can open up that data table in StatCrunch or Excel, or you can copy the clipboard if you've got some other software you're using. I'm going to open it both in Excel and in StatCrunch. I like to use Excel to do the preliminary calculations. Now, you can do this with a hand calculator if you want, but I, I just prefer to use Excel. You know, if you follow me, I use Excel and StatCrunch interchangeably to get the best of both worlds. So we're going to jump over here to Excel. So here's the data. Once I open it in Excel, it puts it in column A. And in order to get the information you need, you need to get the max value, the min value, and the range. And you can just do that with Excel functions, the max function, the min function, and then just subtract those two values to get the range. Once you get the range, we divide that by the number of classes. So if we divide 14 by 5, we get 2.8, and then 1.4, and 0.7 for each of the other two. But remember, when we're making histograms, in particular with my Stat Lab and Stat Crunch, we always want to round up to the next integer value. So I use the round up function there to give me 3, 2, 1 for 5, 10, and 20. So let's jump back to Stat Crunch. So I'm in StatCrunch, there's my data in the first column, which it is called variable one. To get the histogram, we're going to go to graph and then go down to histogram. And we get a dialog box. We've got to tell us which column has our data, variable one. Click on that. And what we need for this particular problem, we just need to pay attention to this part here, which says it's about the bins. It defaults to the frequency distribution, which is what we want for this histogram. So we've got to start the bin somewhere. It's important, again, in StatCrunch and my Stat Lab that you start with your minimum value, which would be 1. And then we're going to set the width here for the first option, five classes. And the width is 3 for this first option. So we just click Compute. And here we've got our basic histogram. And I'm going to expand this just a little bit. You can see comparing it to the correct answer for five classes. It looks pretty, pretty close. The only difference here is that the x-axis starts at zero, ours is one. We can fix that by going to x-axis and we're just going to start that at zero and click OK. Now you can see the charts are identical here. This is at seven. And this upper one here is above 15, but not to 16. And so that looks pretty good. One final thing I want to show you, because it's critical when we do this in Excel, is to understand how StatCrunch creates histograms. Notice here, when I hover over the first bin, it gives me the frequency, the number 7. And it also tells me down here where it says variable 1 column, and it says it's 1 and 4. If you notice, 1 has a left, excuse me, a left bracket by it, and that's called a closed symbol. So that means it includes 1 in that particular bin. 
The four has a parentheses, that's an open symbol, which means four is not in this first bin. It's over here in the second bin. Now you can see four has the closed bracket by it. So it says four is in this bin, seven is not, and then seven is in the third bin, 10 is not, so forth. 10 is in the fourth bin, 13 is not, and 13 is in the last bin. So that's going to be important when we get over to Excel. Now, to create the next portion, we're going to go to Options, Edit, and all we need to do is change this width from 3 to 2, which is our next histogram, and there we get that histogram. We can change the x-axis again. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the the same basic form is there. Again, you could set that to zero. And then finally, I will edit it and go to one for the 20. And you can see, again, it matches that we've got the same pattern here so you can get the right answer. So now we're going to do this second part in the next video, which I have a link to below.